Uh, seems like after Prohibition, which entered in 1933, probably the first bar that would have been opened and would have been available for students was the Black Front or Rocks. Not too long after that, Walt Warmoth uh, purchased this establishment, which was called Little Campus. Uh, being right across from Tim Hall, uh, he had a great business, but he also realized in the mid-1950s they were going to build a new dormitory, three dormitory, LSD complex, uh, down off of Grant Street. So being two blocks or two houses from where they lived at that time, he bought the lot and bought, built Walt's. So Walt had pretty well set himself into good business practices, but the interesting part is none of those were bars. They were all food establishments, uh, later to become bars, and but they were still social hangouts for uh, for the students at Eastern. Walt had uh, had his play establishment called Walt's, uh, and during Marty Patton's era of, that of going to Eastern, he worked for Walt. Post that Marty's time in the major leagues, uh, Marty Patton purchased Waltz from Walt Warmoth, and then it uh, was turned into more of an establishment for of a bar. The proximity close to campus was uh, was very panther oriented, uh, as you can see by the panther out in front. That is one of the big photo shots of people that uh, that come come home or come back to Eastern and with the alumni to have their picture taken with that panther out in front of Marty's. Uh, in the early 80s, uh, Mike Noop had the Uptowner, which was a very successful and prominent business. Uh, also, on the way downtown, you'd go by <coughs> what now is Lefty's Holler, uh, which used to be Sporty's, was really a, uh, a, a, a going business. Later on, the uh, establishments uh, also moved a little farther north to Ted's Warehouse, and that was in the uh, 70s and 80s, all the way into the early 90s. Uh, Ted's was basically built around music. The 80s and 90s <coughs> was Mother's. Uh, Mother's was a very well uh, established bar for fraternity and sorority events. Ike's has transcended uh, through quite a few different changes in over the decades. Uh, gone from where Ike Kindred had it with the wooden floors and all the booths to where one of the original or one of the owners after that took out all the booths, had it more of a large area uh, for standing gathering. Uh, the new owners now have done a wonderful job of bringing this back and refurbishing it by putting in the booths. When people come back and the alumni come back to Eastern, uh, one of the first things they do if they're taking their spouse or taking their, their children or taking their family, they take them to where they used to roam when they were on campus. Many of these people met their spouses here. Many of these people develop relationships that are lifelong relationships that, uh, especially now with social media, with Facebook, that now have been re rekindled to where they can come back together. And then the ease of of having these reunions with people and setting them up makes it great to be able to come back to these establishments that meant so much to them. And now they mean, mean even more through the nostalgia of being able to share it and share those stories and, and those laughs with, with friends and people that they were able to be here with. Tony and I met in, in an entrepreneurship class, and um, Tony was very different than anybody else that I knew. I had gaps in my knowledge, which bothered me immensely at the time, right? If I didn't know something, I, I just, I wanted to learn it. And so part of that was, I had never taken anything relating to creating a business, forming a business, how to run it, management. I was more on the kind of financial modeling analytics side. I already had 21 hours for the semester, which was the max you could take. And so I went to Kathy Schmitz and I said, can I take this for no credit? Because I want to hear what they have to say. I think it's going to be beneficial. And she said, okay. Everybody in that class there was in that class because we're getting credit hours for our work besides one person. And that was Tony. Dr. Minnis had a very unique way of teaching. Sometimes he'd just pull out the paper, read an article, and then we'd discuss about it. And I remember him saying, 
he just took a random pause in the class and he points me out and he points Raul out and he says, you two should talk or you two should become friends because I know a little bit about you, Raul. I know a little bit about you, Tony, and you both are different. Dr. Menace is like, um, you need to pick somebody else to partner with and um, you're gonna build a business plan in this class. I don't remember much of the exacts after, but that's kind of the introduction we needed. And then it got to the course of working on a business plan together, you know, Wazi Financial. Okay, we're gonna build an investment company. What are all these words? I'm like, I'm not really sure. I don't know what I got myself into, but I guess we're partners, we're gonna figure this out. So we write this business plan. And when I say we wrote it, like I think I might've done some of the design on like the graphics of the business plan. So it was just easy to kind of collaborate back and forth together. Um, and it just spiraled, right? I enjoyed, he taught me a lot of things that I wasn't getting exposure to. He had a ton of experience coming in. He, I mean, he's, he's worked with his family um, on the entrepreneurial route far like before I ever did. Um, and so the things he would teach me about business and about how they run, like that was invaluable. Like sure, I knew a lot of stuff about it, but I never had done it um, to the extent. Uh, and so that's where I don't think he gives himself enough credit. That was the first business plan I ever made with Tony. And right then and there, I knew that he was very special. It was the single biggest moment probably in our lives. Um, and you never know how it could have turned out besides that. Tony had kind of graduated and now he's like, hey, you remember that business plan we wrote about that investment company? I said, yeah. He's like, okay, I think I'm gonna do that. And our business plan evolved into what is today LLT Group. And it's a digital marketing agency that solves businesses' problems. If it was just me, I would have failed long ago. I would have failed many times. I would have lost tons of money. I, who knows? Who knows where I would have been? Could have still been successful to this day. But we are very lucky from my perspective of in the beginning, you have a lot of fear and you have a lot of risk that you're sharing. And being able to put that and share that with someone else and not just internalize it yourself made a world of difference. I don't think I could do it with anyone else as seamlessly as we've done it. And so I view it as luck, being in the right time, being in the right place, being aware about what we want to do and growing together. But I talked to so many people and they, again, I wouldn't know how to duplicate it if I had all the resources in the world. We, we have that perfect partnership because I've learned just as much from him as he has from me. And it's like the perfect blend. Um, so it's fun, and we get to have fun with it too, right? Like it's, like, it's like two best friends that get to be on the same journey together. Um, back in 1915, we had three young men who thought that the football team, the blue and the gray, needed more uh, coverage. So they wanted to start a student newspaper so there would be coverage of the football team. So they went to then President Livingston C. Lord and got his blessing. They were completely independent. They were not trying to become part of the university, but they thought they still needed the okay of the president and he gave it to them. Um, they were actually located for the beginning in a house that was across the street from Old Main on Lincoln Avenue. They sold ads, they sold subscriptions, 50 cents a semester, a dollar for the whole year. The first issue came out November 5th, 1915 and the front page featured a story about the football team, which was victorious. And then the story on the other side of the front page was about the first homecoming. So the Daily Eastern News' anniversary aligns with the anniversary of Eastern's homecoming because they both happened at the same time, the, the same year, 1915. And then after a few years, they went bankrupt. <laughs> So at that point, the university did take over the newspaper. It was still student focused and, and run completely by the students, reported by the students, um, but it moved into Old Main and it was in Old Main then for several years, someplace down in the actual building. And then for a time, it was actually up in the tower was, was where their office was, which that would have been cool to be able to 
look out and see everything all over the place. We are one of two daily newspapers left in the state as far as colleges go. We have our own press, which is pretty much the reason why we're still able to print five days a week. Most other uh, schools our size and larger have gone to one or two days a week print and then trying to go five to seven days a week online. Sunday through Thursday nights, the students are in the newsroom working the copy desk, writing headlines, laying out the pages, getting their photos ready. They decide what to cover. They decide how to cover it. They decide how it should be played in the newspaper, where it should be played, what's going to be a featured story on the website, what's going to be just you know run as a headline and a little bit of type. Um, so they, they do make all the decisions themselves. Lots of times you'll find that the students rise to the level of professionals. They know what they need to do and they do it and they, they get the stories covered. We of course have covered big events on campus when Blair Hall burned several years ago. That was a huge story um, for us. But I, one of the things I think is, that the students do a great job on is covering just the day-to-day -day life here. Um, they keep up with the Faculty Senate. They keep up with the Council on Academic Affairs. They make sure that all the things that have to be covered get covered. And then they cover other things that are just interesting for people. We really do consider ourselves as the quote-unquote paper of record for Eastern where like the New York Times tries to be the paper of record for the country, we try to be the paper of record for Eastern because we are the place we want people to be able to go to in 25 years and look back and find coverage of the big events of the day. Um, if they're here in town, they can pick up a paper. Lots of times I go to lunch uh, around town and people in the restaurants will be sitting there reading the Daily Eastern News. So for a lot of people, this is a, a valuable uh, way to get information. Uh, our first president, Livingston C. Lord, used to um, speak in chapel every morning, which we don't have anymore, and then of course also spoke to the graduating classes. And in one of his charges to the graduating class, he used the phrase, tell the truth and don't be afraid. And sometime in the 1930s, the Daily Easter News, which wasn't even called the Daily Easter News then, um, adopted that as its motto, and that is what the students try to live by when they're deciding what to cover and how to cover it. They don't want to be afraid of what the truth will show, even if it might step on somebody's toes, even if it might be inconvenient to Eastern to have that news covered. If it's news happening here, the students want to make sure that they cover it. I uh, decided to start visiting uh, college campuses uh, around uh, the fall of my senior year. And the first place I went to was Eastern because I had a friend's older brother who went there. Uh, and I immediately fell in love with the campus because of its beauty. It was uh, surprisingly beautiful. I really loved that. And I was just sort of wandering around. I was thinking about journalism at the time. Uh, and so I found the journalism building, which was uh, the student services building next to the power plant. And I kind of walked in, and it's a pretty compact place, and I was wandering around, and uh, I accidentally uh, walked into a classroom, because those classrooms are really tight and closely, um, closely packed. Uh, and I realized right away that I'd walked into a classroom, so I uh, threw myself out of the room quickly, and then stumbled into another room that happened to be uh, the director of the journalism uh, department's office, Daniel Thornburg, who happened to be sitting behind his desk. And uh, he smiled and said, can I help you with something? And I said, well, uh, I'm a senior in high school and I'm thinking of coming down to school here. He said, well, have a seat. And he spent 20 minutes or so talking with me. Uh, very sincerely, very generously, uh, really graciously. Uh, uh, DT, as I got to know him later on, was that kind of a guy. Uh, and um, uh, as soon as I walked out of that uh, little chat, I knew where I was gonna go to school. Uh, and so uh, I ended up there at Eastern and uh, thinking of journalism as a major. Uh, and uh, so uh, early in my second semester, freshman year, I kind of got up my courage to walk into the Daily Eastern News office and say, uh, hey, I, I, 
do you guys need any help down here? And as soon as I did that, they grabbed me and <laughs> threw me into the mix uh, of the Eastern News Office, which became uh, much like a family for me. Uh, and it was a great, great environment. I loved uh, it from the get-go. Uh, uh, there were uh, people from all walks of life. You know, we had sorority sisters and jocks, and we had guys who were in rock bands and, and total slackers and artsy types and middle-of-the-road types and clueless people like me. Uh, but uh, we, we, we all um, realized uh, how important it was and we took very seriously uh, uh, putting out that paper on a daily basis. And it was a student-run newspaper, five days a week, as many of you probably know right now. Um, uh, at the time, and I think it still is, it was one of only two public universities its size with a student-run daily newspaper coming out of college and being ready to go. I mean, I was really ready to go. I, I, I cannot believe how well prepared I was through that journalism program and through the Daily Eastern News. So I was at uh, the Winona Daily News for a, a little over a year, and then I uh, got a job at the Daily Herald, and I was there for quite a while, almost nine years, uh, and then I got hired at the Chicago Tribune, uh, and that was in December of 1991, and uh, I've been there ever since, doing stories from uh, the coastline of Peru to uh, Bemidji, Minnesota, to uh, Key West, Florida, to Hurricane Katrina. In 2008, uh, I was part of a team of uh, six reporters uh, that won a Pulitzer Prize for investigative reporting. Um, one was a graduate of Loyola University, another was a graduate of Northwestern University, another was a graduate of Stanford University, another one went to, uh, graduated from um, Columbia University Journalism School, another one graduated from a place called Harvard University, and another one graduated from Eastern Illinois University. So uh, I, I say that only because um, Eastern is the kind of a place um, that gives you that shot, that gives you that um, opportunity. Uh, if you're willing to learn from your mistakes and keep plugging away. Um, and that's, again, another reason uh, that I have a deep affection for the place and the people who um, help me. The thing that really I most remember about Eastern was Napoleon. Napoleon was this stray golden retriever, and that's the first golden retriever I've ever seen. They didn't have many golden retrievers back in the 50s. He and his, his mate was a German shepherd named Woofy, and they would wander around. They weren't the official mascot at that point. They were just two stray dogs. They had several litters of pups, and they'd always pick out somebody's porch and have them underneath the porch. And so, for years, it was a distinction in, Ellen, in Charleston to say, well, my dog is a descendant of Napoleon. Napoleon was this big, lovable golden retriever uh, that uh, he, would, he would always come to all university events, even before he was the official mascot. Now, one time, and when school wasn't in, he would come to different homes, uh, and he'd always come to our home. I remember Christmas Eve, his, him being in the house with Woofie because uh, it was cold outside. He knew that we would give him some food and he, he would come in there. But uh, what happened, they weren't official. He wasn't the official dog, but everybody at Eastern felt like he was. Well, the police shot Woofie. They said she was a stray dog and it just caused a huge uproar. And at that point, Napoleon became the official mascot at Eastern. And it was made clear to the Charleston police, do not touch Napoleon. From then on, he was listed as the official mascot. You would go to events uh, and Napoleon would always be there. If Napoleon wasn't there, then you just, your event was a failure. He would go into classes and professors were used to him walking in and he, and it was a sign of his uh, thought that professor was a good professor, he was a good lecturer, if Napoleon would walk in and go to sleep. Now, if Napoleon walked in and about two minutes later got up and left, then that professor better work on his lectures. People would come in and do concerts uh, back then. Uh, Louis Armstrong was here once and people like that. And they were told, now, during your performance, there might be this golden retriever that walks up on the stage. Don't get scared, that's, that's just what he does. He, and at any football game or basketball game, he'd show up. 
I was in eighth grade. I remember when they told us in class that they had found him. He had died uh, that winter and they'd found him underneath somebody's porch. And then they buried him south of Old Main where they have a plaque. Now a lot of people don't know Napoleon today. And every new president since uh, I think 1999, I have had a little chat with about Napoleon. Uh, so they understand. I take him out and show him where he's buried. And so they, they know who Napoleon is. Hi, my name is Allison Maley, and uh, we are here today in the Illinois State Capitol in the House Chamber. Um, I am a 2002 graduate and also a 2010 graduate of Eastern Illinois University. Um, while I was an undergraduate student, I was student body president uh, from 2002 to 2003. Um, so a lot of my time at Eastern was spent um, in the Residence Hall Association and student leadership and student government. Um, so that's really what kind of makes my experience at Eastern Special uh, were the experiences that I had as a student leader um, and the projects that we worked on together as, as student government members. Um, so one of the projects that I worked on in particular was called, now it's called Panther Service Day. Uh, the first year it was called the uh, Bucket Brigade, which is modeled after a program from my hometown in Alton, uh, where we had student volunteers and community volunteers paint homes of folks in the uh, Charleston and Mattoon community. So it was really kind of a way to um, try to kind of rebuild some of those uh, bridges that had been burned uh, amongst the student population and the, and the community at the time. Um, so, you know, it was something that I'd worked on as a, as a high school student where we had gone out and uh, made some small repairs and did some painting on, on homes in the community. Um, so I worked with a lot of folks in Charleston and on the Eastern Campus to try to uh, model that same type of program and kind of provide a community service to our, to our, our neighbors in, in Charleston. So now Panther Service Day has really grown. Um, it's still uh, active on, on Eastern's campus and the student leaders are still uh, reaching out to the community, usually in April, sometime in the spring. Uh, weather permitting to go and, and visit with community members. Um, I believe they do a lot of, of help at the Douglas Hart Nature Center. Um, I think they've gone out and, and cleaned fire trucks even um, and, and kind of gone out and done some community service projects all throughout the Charleston, Mattoon and even the Coles County region. Um, so it's really neat to kind of see that program still in existence today and having those kind of building those relationships amongst the student population and the, the community population at large. Um, so it's something I'm really proud of and I'm really excited that it's still happening. A lot of my success and a lot of my skills um, in, in lobbying and, and community development and um, advocacy and communications came from uh, my experience as a student leader at Eastern and, and having that freedom um, and that flexibility and that um, those opportunities to really create projects and work with others in the community, um, you know, write press releases and, and really kind of reach out to others across campus and, and across the community to try to build something together, um, I think is what helped me uh, come into this position and, and be successful at it. So uh, thanks to Eastern and thanks to all the opportunities that were given to me. Um, and thanks for the opportunities that are, that are offered to uh, incoming students and students uh, for years to come through student government and other student leadership opportunities. Hello there. What a great section of uh, stories. And one of my favorites, mm -hmm. I have to say, just started because it brought it off, back, started off with Ron Bales and Bar, uh, Bar Life, is that what we well, call it? Was it was called Night Life. Night Life here at, uh, in Charleston during your EIU experience. So it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. to lots do the research fun, for that. Lots of different places to mm -hmm. visit while you're in town. Lots of alumni come oh, back to a gosh. lot of those establishments. Of course they do. And everybody remembers the Panther. Mm -hmm. At yep. Marty's, that's and a great any, I bet you there's lots of people out there that remember Ted. So 
I'm yes. going to challenge you. Mm -hmm. If you went to any of those establishments, have lots of great memories, just get a copy for yourself tonight of the DVD because that alone mm -hmm. brings back lots of memories. You see a lot of photos in there, right. maybe a lot of people that you know. Right. For a gift of $75 to WEIU, we would love to send you a copy of the program you're watching tonight. And for $60, if you get two or more, it's $60 each. So we would love to have you give tonight. We've had a total of 28 people call tonight, which has been great. And we're going to do some of the thank yous here in a second. But let's get the phone blitz going right now. If you love this program, please get on your phone right now and call us. We need you tonight to support a program that WEIU has produced. Right now, you're seeing a news watch um, student. student. And what does he do? New, what does he do? Weather. He does weather. weather so him and... Ever do that. So yes. we love having our Eastern students here and to be a part of this. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. It is. My and if you watch News Watch, give us a call and let us mm -hmm. know what you think about it and grab a copy of the DVD as well and let him know yes. what a wonderful job he's doing. We have News Watch. Yay. We, we are proud of our News Watch and it's Monday through mm -hmm. Friday mm -hmm. from um, at 5.30 5 to 6. And, you know, it's great to see these young mm -hmm. students come here and, wow, they leave here with so much knowledge and they get really good jobs. I'll tell you what, a lot of them are in the studio with us tonight mm -hmm. because there was some weather we were concerned mm -hmm. about. We've got Everett over here and he's doing social media. We've got some other students back here. Cameron Craig was back there sure. from Geology Geography. So if you want to say thank you to them, mm -hmm. the way to say thank you is to call tonight, yes. get a copy of the DVD, support WEIU because when you support WEIU, we in turn can support students and their broadcasting careers. That's right, Ken. Right now, there's nobody calling, so that's not good. We, well, there we go. One, thank you. So right now, we have uh, several people answering the phone. Some storytellers are back mm -hmm. here, so please call. The number's on your screen, and uh, that's Wanda Kay right there, and she's, get, she's the one that gets the first call. So Blythe would be the next one. She's my niece. Mm -hmm. She's an alumni here at um, Eastern, so we're excited that Blythe's here along with all the other people in the studio tonight. Hey, there was a couple of um, gentlemen who were part of the story segment, uh, Raul Wahi and Tony Zapparo. They were part of the School of Business and um, graduates, very successful alumni. If you were part of the School of Business, give us a call tonight. I know Jeannie Dell is one of the thank right. yous we're going to give. Mm -hmm. Claire was one of our students yes. as well. She was one of our Newswatch students. So I'm putting a challenge out for the School of Business alumni tonight That's as well. great idea. So we want to give a shout out to Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie. We love you and we love your daughter. She was a joy to have mm -hmm. here um, at WEIU TV and radio. We'd like to give a, a thank you to Denise Head from Tennessee. Tennessee. She graduated in 1981 from EIU and she ran cross, cross country and track. So thank you so much. Uh, Shannon and Andy from Charleston. He was a storyteller for Charleston. This is our story. Yes. And for Matt Toon, this is our story. Arlene from Paris. She's answering the phone right now. She's the class of 2003 and she's been an employee here at Eastern since 1992. 27 plus yeah, years. So Arlene. just give a hand to her. Arlene Good is job. a. She, she bleeds blue. Yes, yeah, she does. And we depended on her to find a lot of photos for the stories that you're watching tonight. We want to give you another chance to call right mm -hmm. now. The number's at the bottom of your screen. WEIU is a public broadcasting station. Without your support, we would not be able to produce programs such as this. We've produced a lot of different Our Story programs on several communities around, and we wanted mm -hmm. to produce this one on EIU because we want to tell who EIU is, and we can only do that mm -hmm. with your support. So be sure to give us a call tonight, $75 for one copy, Two or more, $60 each. And right now is your opportunity. Call the number at the bottom of your screen. Well, I have a very special guest sitting here uh, waiting to take your phone call. But this is Matt. And you are an alumni of Eastern Illinois University. And you were affiliated with the radio station, weren't you? I had roots in what was known as WELH, which existed for 20 years here on campus, a completely student-built and operated station. Uh, at the time, and it eventually gave the seeds to WEIU, folded into WEIU FM uh, about 1994 19, uh, mm -hmm. or 84, and, you know, was able to succeed and move we're the whole station on. We're still going. Yeah. Some of the people we worked with are no longer here, but, but you we're still, still here. You still get in contact with some of your friends from oh, back yeah. in the day. Oh, yeah. We have a, I've had a great group of friends who were from that station, 
we get together every year. We've done it for 40 years now. That's awesome. This, this year would have been that anniversary. Yeah. We're going to hear more from Matt and his story in just a little bit, but being a part of this led to some other connections on EIU. I don't know if you know this or not, so let the cat out of the bag. What are the other things you do on campus? Okay. If you graduated from Eastern any time in the last quarter century, I said your name <laughs> crossing the stage. I said, no one gets out of here unless they cross through my toll booth. Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing. A um, lot of sports opportunities that I had, not only with the athletic department, but moved into the Illinois High School Association. So I do the state track meet, the state cross country meet, the state badminton meet, mm -hmm. and travel, travel across the state doing track meets. I'm at Joliet Stadium this Saturday. There you go. Well, you've got the voice for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And it's all because you started here, it's right? It's all because I came to Eastern. That's right. There you go. Bump for that. All right, Matt, thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate your story. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Jana, over to you. Thank you, Matt. He is a great, great storyteller. We really appreciate him, Matt Pye. So right now, there's no one calling. We need you Yes, you to get on the phone right now. We need a phone blitz. And we get a phone blitz. This whole place lights up. It's so much fun. So right now, the phone number's at the bottom of your screen. If you are a graduate from Eastern Illinois University and you walked across that stage, we would love for you to call tonight. We need you to call tonight. We talked earlier. If WEIU-TV had not done a program on Eastern, who else would have done it? And we can say... Nobody. Probably no one. Nobody. We loved making this program. It took a lot of work. That's why we're asking you for mm -hmm. your support along with our underwriters that were so generous. I want to put out another challenge. I'm okay. all about challenges yes, tonight. She is. So Ted Gregory was the Pulitzer Prize winner mm -hmm. from uh, EIU. And um, there's a lot of students who take part in the Daily Eastern yes, News. Yes, there is. And we heard that story as well right before uh, Dr. Lola Burnham told that story. If you were ever a part of the Daily Eastern News, if you tell the truth and you aren't afraid to, <laughs> you give us a call tonight. <laughs> That's really good. I love that. I learned something. So right now, the phones are just quiet. It feel, I feel like there's crickets in here. I can almost hear them. So that's not a good thing for us. If you have loved watching this program, if you learned one thing tonight from this program, we really need your support. So please go to the phone. If you don't want the DVD for yourself, you can give it to someone else or just give a gift to WEIU to show your appreciation. So far tonight, we've had several people call, but we can tell you right now, we need more. We do need more. And let me continue to tell you, we're streaming online. So if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, you know what, I don't know if so-and-so out of the That's broadcast awesome. area knows about this show, be sure to tell them to go to our website, weiu.net, and you can click on our Facebook link, you can click on our YouTube link, and share it with all your friends outside of the viewing area. And also on Facebook, we have a group because we want to extend the stories from tonight. And so join the Facebook group, EIU This Is Who We Are, and share your stories from here on out. Jaina, you've got someone over there that you want to talk to, right? Boy, do I ever have somebody over here. This is Miss Arlene Brown, and she has loved Eastern forever. So tell me your connection. Well, I started working here in 1992 up in the castle, mm -hmm. you know, the great, great place to work. Bed. Great. I've worked there. I've worked in financial aid. I've worked in housing and dining, and now I work mm -hmm. at the library in the dean's office. We have a new dean, a lot of happening things going mm -hmm. on at the library. Mm -hmm. It's National Library Week. Wow. Yeah, so that's great. And I got my degree here in 2003 from the School of Business, so another challenge. Yeah, yes. come on, School of Business, let's <laughs> step up. So um, I do bleed blue. We know that you do. She's dressed in blue tonight, and we really appreciate you, Arlene. She was a storyteller for Paris. This yes, is our story. Is. So we love it when we get to know all these great people, and then they come back and say, I want to be a part of this program. It's a great thing to be a part of, so please, you know, give us a call. Thank you, Arlene. Call us. We appreciate it. Let me tell you, we all bleed blue here tonight. We're wearing blue. We've got blue on the screen. All of the banners that you see back behind us usually live in Old Main, and we want to thank the admissions crew for allowing us to use those beautiful banners back there. Hey, Allison Maley told us a story about Student Service Day, and there's lots of students who participate in that, especially at Jumpstart at the beginning of the year. And if you were part of Student Service Day, you know um, Allison, if you know Rachel, if you know, know Christy, if you know um, um, Beth, 
just give us a call and say, hey, this is what I've done for Student Service Day because our students are out in the community doing lots and lots of service projects. It's real exciting when you see Eastern students doing things in the community. And that means a lot to those of us who live in Charleston. When we see the students out there and they all have their t-shirts on, it gives us this great feeling. It's called town and gown. You know, Eastern is a part of Charleston and we want Charleston folks to become a part of Eastern. And we want to hear from you. Call us right now. This is so important. Mm -hmm. This is such a very special program mm -hmm. on Eastern Illinois University. And there's been thousands of people over the years who have been a part of this university. Think about what this university means to you. Think about the education, where it led you in life. Mm -hmm. Think about the experience, the friendships, the, the relationships, your husbands, your wives, your girlfriends, <laughs> your boyfriends. Who knows all the people that you've met here and what it's turned into. This show matters. And we need you to call in and get a copy of the DVD to let us know that this matters to you. And how do you call? And how do you get your own copy? You call right now. The number's at the bottom of your screen. And we would love to be able to say your name and thank you on air. We want to tell your story. So for a gift of $75 to WEIU, we'll send you a DVD. Two or more are $60 each. There are people calling and saying, I want to. I want to give one to somebody I know that would love to hear the history of Eastern as well. We need your phone calls right now. We need you to call, get on the phone, and uh, Blythe's on the phone right now, and so is Wanda Kay. We still need more phone calls, so please be the next one to call. We've got more stories coming up down in the Fine Arts Center. We're going to hear about Newswatch. Uh, Bob Sterling, he was here mm -hmm. earlier. The sports teams, uh, someone who came back for an mm -hmm. uh, alumni uh, anniversary and someone who reconnected with EIU just recently. We like so don't that. go anywhere. This is more of EIU. This, this is, is who we are. are.